it seems like a waste of time to use charcoal to figure out exactly where you're going to do it. You're going to be covering it all up anyway. Let's see. Something a little. Oh, okay, I'll do. I'll do this one down here. Uh, that's a demo from a few years ago. So, uh, yeah, just about the one third mark here. I'll bring it in like this. Here's that little sandbar here. It's a, the trees with, and then here's a little, kind of like, this could be water. Don't know yet. Uh, back here in the distance will be either some sand dunes or, you know, pajaro dunes or golf course here. And you, you got some trees here. Just block it in. Use your whole brush. Or in this case, because I uh, I painted the uh, underpainting so thin, I can actually lift it off. Now I'm not going to paint the trees yet, and I'll show you why. There's a reason. Put trees and details on top of the sky you paint on. If you put the trees on now, then you got to paint around the trees and through the trees. So save them for later. start all of these and then later on I finish them off. At any time you can change them of course. Okay it's near the halfway point but I'm gonna have a tree coming up here so this will never you'll never see that. This is the second one in front of that. And does the undercoat give a different effect? Yes the undercoat this is why a lot of times, uh, springtime, summertime, you'll see plain air painters, outdoor landscape, they'll use a warmer underground, warmer than this. So the undercoat will probably be like, like a orange or a reddish, rustic red. And then you put all the colors on top. Um, it has a wonderful look to it. It has a little glow. In wintertime, you go to a darker. Because the white is almost too white. There's some that are sort of sunset. Those treated differently. Yes, yes. The sunsets are two techniques. First day, I started with the sky at the top, darkest, and then I took it down almost halfway. And then it's all rough looking, very rough. And then at the bottom, a third, or maybe a fourth from the bottom. I went from white to yellow to orange to orangish red. Just barely touching the blue. Didn't have to do any blending. Then the next step was putting the dark clouds on top. And then the dark landscape at the bottom. It covered up everything that was underneath. It was so clean, so fast. And then the next step was to do some of the underpainting of that glowing orange on the underside. And you can take it much further than that, because when you look at the sunset, any of the clouds, the sky's going to be darker further up. The top of the clouds will be darkest away from the light, because the sun's setting, so it's shooting up underneath. And so you get a little bit of that gold underneath, and the illusion you create is very effective. Try a couple of combinations of paint here. This is this. Uh, this is a brilliant blue. It's close to cerulean, not quite uh, exactly the cerulean color I'm looking for. But uh, this one's got good resistance. Now, if I was on TV and being paid a nice honorarium, and the people were watching, I would be, of course. Painting with George Rivera. Let's take a little bit of my yellow oak. And I'll take a little bit of my white. I can't even white. How you hold this is your own personal preference. It's a 
about a 50-50 mix, but it doesn't have to be exact. See, now on my, my video voice. Just put it together like that. give you a chance to create a little color chart so that uh, you get that value and then you add a little more and you get that darker shade. So a lot of artists when they're painting what they like to do is to create basically three shades of color. The middle color say on the face, the lighter highlighted and then maybe the shade color. When they have those three mixed out, then they can just dip their brush into it and block it in. So a lot of portraits you see will look very much very angular and blocked in. They're not blended. But basically, they have figured out the color of an individual. So it's, it's a very good technique. I would recommend that. So that's why you see arts using that, that technique. This color it has got yellow ochre and ultramarine blue. So it gives me like a fall color, a winter color. So you lock that in. What I'm sensing already is that the underpainting which I did this afternoon, has not fully dried. But what that means is it's lifting off and blending a little bit. Now this is a very neutral color. You know, you, you go out, you wake up in the morning, you look out the window, you see that, okay, you know, you're not gonna wear your shorts or your t-shirt, you know it's gonna be a cold day. sense by looking at colors now, you know, what the weather's going to be like. So just, just kind of block this in. Now, I would recommend on a landscape, painting in a horizontal kind of stroking. Stretches it out and creates blending that goes this way. If you're doing this way, you can end up making it look like it's raining or, or things are falling you know, from the sky. slightly lighter color than above. This is only the first coat. It will go on a little rough, maybe a little inconsistent. And even if your line's not right, don't worry about it. Because by the time you paint the mountains or the hills, you're going to be covering it over. Already, I'm looking at this area and thinking, uh, what, what type of clouds am I going to be creating? What kind of shapes? So there's a couple of ways of going about clouds. You can paint them in later, or you can see what's developing and build up the cloud. I'll show you what I mean by that.
for those of you who got warnings uh, regarding uh, campus lockdown, uh, it worked. This is why we keep the doors closed. Uh, when there is trouble, the police on campus can lock down all the doors to keep you protected. Nobody can come into the room, not even me. I would have to knock on the wall, on, on the door, you'd have to recognize my voice and let me in. You'll probably know me because I'll be begging and pleading, let me in! <laughs> but, <laughs> but even then, you know, like, how do we know for sure? <laughs> Some of the teachers couldn't get back in the room. But this is why, you know, some of the classes when it gets really warm and, and the heater's not working properly, you know, people pop open the door. It's not a good thing. So just kind of, you know, lay something in like this. start darker at the top, work your way down, add a little bit more lighter like that titanium buff I'm doing right now. Now for some reason, this gray color is, is drying, has dried uh, permanent. Really nice. This one was starting to reactivate for some reason. It didn't happen. You know, it's just really, it's hard to explain. I mean, acrylics generally dry uh, at the same rate. You can see now I've started to introduce a slightly lighter blue. Right now, if you want seamless blending while it's wet or near dry, upper section to be dry because then you can't reactivate the edge. It's just going to be a hard dried out line. Very, the sky color, so it looks natural. There are days when the sky will look one shade of, of, of blue all the way top to bottom, left to right. I mean, it's just perfect. But most of the time, you're going to see variations of blue having some of this undercolor come through, it gives it the more evolution going back from the space. This is a number eight uh, filler. And uh, it's, it's moving the paint very well here. This way. This way you can force when the paint's almost dry. If there's some uneven areas you're very unhappy with, you can go with a slightly stiffer brush and kind of go up here and blend it. But I would recommend on the whole, at this stage, now I'm going to go just more just pure this buff here, right on the horizon. Same brushes uh, for acrylic and oils. You just gotta clean them very well. 